Imagine you are a god and you want to write code for humans. Humans come in all sorts of different variations, but you specifically want to write classes for mothers and brothers and lovers. Don't ask me why those particular ones, you're the one who wants them. Mothers need to be able to care for their children, brothers need to be able to annoy their siblings, and lovers need to make their partners come over to their flat at night and make love lee breakfasts in the morning. However, all these different people also need to do what all humans do, breathe, drink, eat, and watch YouTube videos. Look what happens when you write that code and copy-paste it in for each type of person. Redundancy Here is our first golden rule, don't write the same code twice. Inheritance solves this. You write a human class, which contains the things all humans can do, and create subclasses, which contain only the specifics of caring, annoying, and lovely breakfast making, whilst inheriting the rest. Not only that, but when you start dealing with groups of humans, you can refer to them all as mere mortal beings before your majesty, rather than having to recognize each and every schmuck and their individuality. This is a fundamental idea of object-oriented programming, but it does raise some problems. Inheritance, I mean, not reducing people's identities down to barely different flavors of human, that's fine. If you've ever dabbled with code, you might have heard the term composition over inheritance. Thinking back to inheritance, did anything strike you as flawed about it? Let's return to your strange obsession with developing mothers, brothers, and lovers. Sure, we won't repeat any of the code that all humans do, but what about your mother's lover who's the brother of your uncle? Your dad's a lover to your mother and a brother to his brother, so we need the code for both. But if we want to avoid writing the same code twice, we can't just make all brothers a subclass of lovers or all lovers a subclass of brothers. Not all brothers have lovers and not all lovers have brothers. Instead, we compose our humans out of different traits. Each human could have a list of applicable traits, and together, they compose that person. This doesn't replace inheritance, however, they're both useful. Just add in another step, and we see that all people are humans. Zuckerberg can be a popular exception. Every single person inherits the thing that humans do, but individuals are better defined as composed from different traits. Look, I know you want to get back to your mother's brother's lovely breakfast making, but the following example works better. We've established that you are a god. Stop getting caught up in the intricacies of your relative's love lives, it's time to plant some trees. After all, your brother's mother's lover needs to breathe. Trees could inherit plant properties, and could be composed of traits like photosynthesizing and dropping apples on heads, but how do we describe the structure of roots, branches, and leaves. Neither inheritance nor composition really deal with this, but recursion does it spectacularly well. Put simply, we say that a tree is a node and a list of trees. This means that we're defining a tree in terms of itself, which is recursion in a nutshell. To understand this better, let's consider the simplest possible tree. A node and an empty list. So what's the next easiest tree after that? A node and a list containing just one tree, which can be the simplest for now. After that we have a node and a list containing the previous tree, and so on and so forth. No matter how many times we create a new tree that contains the previous, we either always end up finishing with the simplest tree, or we don't finish at all. In this way, we can have a tree as tall as we like. And as each list doesn't need to contain just one single tree, we can have trees as wide as we like. Seem familiar? You've just created all sorts of trees with just a few words. And if that isn't godlike, I don't know what is. Recursion obviously isn't just for large-scale gardening, but the principle stays the same. Define a problem in terms of solving smaller variations of itself, and you can do a lot with only a little. There's a sorting algorithm called merge sort which does exactly this. Split lists into smaller lists, and then sort those instead, because that's easier. 
Speaking of merge sort, your mothers, brothers, lovers, and various others all need to be sorted, God. Creating order from chaos is kinda your thing, and there's a load of good ways of doing it. You could sort by annual cheese consumption, or hours spent watching videos, or preferred coffee to milk ratio. And as we all know, people could and should be segregated according to these. So, let's write a load of functions that all sort based on that. You know better than to write the same sorting algorithm over and over, just changing the details, right? Maybe you could pass in a variable which dictates which property to sort by? That's a bit messy, god. Here is another golden rule. Each method should do something specific. There's an area of computer science known as functional programming. Certain languages have functional features, such as the programming language of God, and Lisp, and even Monty Python. A common feature of such languages is the ability to pass functions as parameters to other functions. So, let's write our functions to specifically compare cheese, hours, and milky coffee, then pass them to our generic sort function depending on which stage of the human segregation we're dealing with. Being God is a lonely existence. Sure, you might be omnipotent, omniscient, eternal, and surrounded by your brother and his lovers, but are you happy? The likely answer is no. And the likely reason is that you've created an inheritance chain longer than my manhood. You've probably attempted to compose toasters from the million different fundamental concepts of your universe and been swept away by an overflowing stack of recursion, or passed so many parameters that each human has become painfully aware of their exact, sorted position in society and no one wants to do anything anymore. These are bugs. Ridiculously phrased, overcomplicated, blatantly stupid bugs crawling all over your screen. It's okay though, as there is one last programming technique to discuss. Rubber ducks. Create yourself someone to talk to, and explain to them exactly why all your divine code ought to be working. Chances are, you'll catch yourself mid-sentence, pause in thought for a bit, and realize what you've done wrong. Mothers, brothers, and even lovers can fill this role, but inanimate objects have been sorted into the camp with the highest patience. If you liked this style of video, let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.